Okay, let's talk about project planning and more particularly about the Gantt chart. So we plan a project so that we know what we're going to do, what are all the things we need to get done to make this project work, what order they're going to be in, and how much time it takes. Now this is true whether we're working alone or in a group. But if we are working in a group, it's even more important that this is all documented so that people are available when we need them and they've got an idea of how long we need them for. So if you look at this chart, you'll see those bars and the longer the bar is, the more days or hours we've allocated to that task. So we and those lines in between them, those are dependencies. So for instance, it says here that we can't create a problem statement until we have completed our project plan. Now, in actual fact, we might not have that dependency. That is a decision for the um, project manager to make. But when you're working on your own, you'll notice that pretty much everything is dependent because you are the only person working on this. But you don't have to have dependencies between some things. Some things can happen before, after, during, and you can allocate them to different people. So this is in a piece of software called Team Gantt. But there is also a Gantt project, which is a good free bit of software. Um, and the um, study design doesn't say you have to use software to do this at all. You could absolutely do this pen and paper some other way. Uh, those are the features. That's a dependency there, that line. And that basically says this can't be started until this is done. Those are milestones, which means that, you know, we are at a key point in the project. You don't actually do anything for those. But sometimes in a big project team, you'll celebrate that. Um, these bars here will tell you how long that section of it takes. Uh, for some reason I couldn't get it working for the evaluation, but I'm sure that's just a shortcoming on my part. And you've also got this thing called a critical path. Now the critical path isn't shown on here. Um, Team Gantt doesn't actually have that feature built in. But a critical path will tell you what's the shortest time you can get this project done as it sits. And so, for instance, if you were to move out one of these things, so let's say that this task here, they're creating the pseudocode, moved out because, you know, somebody was sick or it was just more complicated, you'll notice that everything else moves out. So the critical path of the project actually gets longer. One common misconception in the practice exam was that the critical path actually only gives you the shortest path through the bare bones of the project if you leave out some of the features. But in actual fact, the critical path is for the scope that we have. No way of saying, well, if we only build part of the project, then we'll have this timeline. That's uh, project plan really isn't for that. The other thing that I want to mention just before I stop faffing around with this is that if you make a change to your project, so if you go back and say, well, we're going to have a different scope, then there is a very good chance that you are going to change the critical path. Uh, if you make a decision and say, well, we need this, and you're down here in the project, and you need to get your programming done and so forth, well, then that everything could blow out from there. Um, so that's what it looks like. This is the waterfall model, by the way. If this were the agile model, it would look like this, but again and again you kind of have multiple waterfalls. So there you go. That's what we know about project planning, and I hope that helps you with your revision.